basically, whenever you dissolve something in any liquid, the freezing point of that liquid gets lower. And the amount of lowering doesn't actually depend on what it is you're dissolving. It only depends on how many atoms or molecules of what you're dissolving you put in. It's based on the number, not the identity. So the fact that we use salt has nothing really to do with the fact that it's salt. It's that that is cheap and it dissolves well in water. So essentially, when you throw salt on ice, what happens is that there's a thin layer of water on the surface of ice, no matter how cold it is. And some of the salt dissolves in that thin layer of water. Now, when it's dissolved, that water's freezing point becomes lower. But moreover, water molecules from the solid layer of ice move from the solid into the liquid. In other words, the surface layer begins to melt. The liquid has a lower temperature of freezing, and if the temperature is low enough, it will not refreeze at the temperature of the air and you will then eventually melt all the ice because you're basically drawing the solid into the liquid and you're creating a salt solution that doesn't freeze at that temperature. Now, the thing is that you can only get a certain amount of salt to dissolve in water and of course at the colder temperatures less salt will dissolve and that's why they say that there is a limit below which you can't use salt to melt the ice and that's a limit that we do cross here in Winnipeg in the winter uh, the temperature is around minus 20 degrees you cannot melt ice with salt below minus 20 and most people would say below about minus 10 or 15 it's not really practical now there are other substances that people use to melt ice, but they all work in the same way. They all work on the principle that dissolving anything in a liquid lowers its freezing point.